Hi, my name is Praise Ganiyu and you are welcome to One Soaking Channel, your number one gospel channel in Nigeria, West Africa and in the world at large. Here you are going to be getting messages that will defy you and also build up your spiritual stamina. So kindly subscribe, like, drop your comment and also turn on your notification bell so you can get notified when we drop any other videos. Thank you. Somebody was trying to invite me and he was, the person was sending to connect me for the invitation. This was what he told him. He said, I need that man, bring that man quickly. Um, his basis of wanting to invite me was that uh, we were visible on social media. And um, when I come to his place, there's a likelihood that uh, the crowd will come. But he didn't stop there. He said, but his fear is that if I come now, and I don't know how he raised this place. I will now destroy the things that he's building. That, that's his fear. So, is that really an invitation? Was that an invitation? So there were things that have been used to build the place that I'm not aware of. And there's a likelihood that those things will suffer loss if by any means I accept the invitation. Meanwhile, he was still extending the invitation. Went to minister somewhere in the north. And then a, mini, a music minister was invited, came to the podium and took the microphone and she began to sing. Her voice was as thin as that of a nightingale. She, she, could, she could do all kinds of stuff across octaves. Her vo vocal cord was treated with lime because what she could do with her voice was, was a miracle. But when she ministered, the Holy Ghost in my spirit had a problem. Because what she was doing was good. But at the end of the day, at the end of that service, we discovered it, it did not come from God. <laughs> May you not be trapped in the good island. Make effort to go to the God island in the name of Jesus Christ. So one of the most noble labors that we need to be quit to the body at this time is, a, is a, a, the principles through which we can run spiritual checks and find out the source of things because that's what Jesus would do and he did that in the book of John chapter 8 verse 44 where we read yesterday hallelujah now I'd like to show you something quickly because I did a research on false prophets and I've been doing that research for the past three years now hallelujah been doing that research for the past three years by the prompting of the Holy Spirit I began to do that research and I looked for books everywhere that would help me build muscle in the research I was doing. And unfortunately, I did not find so many. And the ones I found were scanty. So I knew that I had to do that research um, myself. These are the things I found. It is not yet complete. Um, when it is fully complete with all the needed muscle, we will put them in a book. But uh, this are some of the things I found. Now, in my Bible study, I found out that there are three major reasons or three major outlooks of a minister that is operating from the flesh. The first objective of all his activity, number one, is gain. Gain. Second texture of their labors is that they use people. They use people. They don't build people, but they use people. So everybody is a tool to be used. How many of you were able to pray for 10 hours before you joined us in RC and Lagos? Okay, let's do it the other way around. How many of you could not pray the way you are praying now before you joined us? So you see, something has been built, a capacity has been built and if, if capacity will be built in people there is only one way it can be accomplished is through sacrifice so discipleship involves commitment it involves sacrifice but anything that is built on the flesh is an activity that is designed to use people number three the overall objective 
the overall objective of the initiative is selfish it is self-centered the overall objective is not empowering the body of Christ not laboring to unveil the mind of God and to develop kingdom content and make it available for anyone that wants to navigate on the Lord's path all of these are not part of the objectives it is an enterprise that is what selfish um, when you see that church becomes is operating like a business then you need to understand that genuine ministry is absent because the objective of business is profit so if I pray for you you pay for the prayer if I prophesy on you what do you do you pay for the prophecy if I lay hands on you you pay for the anointing if you are coming to see me in the office you come with service charge so you will now discover that what is going on is not a service that is inspired by the Holy Spirit but it is a business that is running you pay for prayer you pay for blessing you pay for consultation and counseling do you understand what I'm talking about then you will know that the objective is a business and if it is a business then it is rooted in the flesh and God is absent this is my own personal research okay all right so in in an initiative that is powered by the flesh you will see the preacher using curses as a means of control that if you do this the curses of our ancestors will come upon you so when you see an atmosphere where people are regulated by curses all right uh, just know that uh, that's one of the insurance policies that the flesh makes available if you can release a curse and say if anybody that operates like this you're cursed it's a, it's a way of witchcraft it's a way of control using curses as an instrument whenever you see the need to use a curse as an instrument to again some form of compliance is an indication of the fact that what is going on there has its operating system in the flesh because the way paul did ministry was that he commended himself to every man's conscience in the fear of god it is in the privacy of their conscience that they received a nudging from god to begin to follow apostle paul do you understand that there was no more barricade that was built to contain the people other than the witness of the holy ghost that was administered on their conscience when you find that and there's a lot of that right now is now the trend for curses to be used as instrumentalities of dominion and control those are principles of witchcraft and they are rooted in the works of the flesh i'm saying that the flesh can masquerade and be and, and it can do ministry the flesh but these are the symptoms that you're going to find in a situation where ministry is done under the operating system of the flesh number what five when you discover that um the in the history of the ministry there is in the foundation of the ministry um they pioneered that ministry in rebellion according to the book of first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 to 24 please help me help me first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 to 24 if in the foundation of the ministry you have any form of rebellion and the work that we claim to be doing for god was pioneered under the auspices of a rebellious spirit this is what the bible has to say about that and samuel said had the lord had the lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the lord behold to obey this is this are equations from the spirit equations to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking than the fats of ram that's the first spiritual disclosure it's a it's spiritual knowledge that samuel gave and the first thing he said is that it is to obey obedience is better than sacrifice how will it look like if you ask someone to bring the equipment maybe the equipment 
is outside and you ask the person bring the, the equipment in and instead of the person bringing the equipment the person begins to scrub the floor and it might even be that scrubbing the floor is more difficult than bringing the equipment are you there the person has exalted that sacrifice much more than obedience the only reason why you should be in ministry is not because someone is because you are doing it to obey God are you there obedience to God that's why I'm here I'm here in obedience to God we finished building a very good place in Benway State and it is customary according to the trends of our time for you to build a good place and then you get situated in the heart of the place laboring to fill the place and while they were working on my office they, there were arguments they said no the office is too small they had to break some walls and extend the office and then they had they finished the tiling and the screening and it was white and fine glory and they came in with big tables and chairs so i walked in one of those times they had not yet painted the wall it was a big white office and i sat on the table and the holy spirit whispered to me and said your place is not here <laughs> your place is not here your labor for me that's if you want to obey me i know this place is good this place is all right this place is comfortable it's convenient but if your business is the business of obeying me what i want you to be doing right now is to hop from place to place from city to city from nation to nation bearing witness of my kingdom that's your place so i now call chief don i said ah, you've been looking for a place to pray and all of that here you are pray here because i knew that in my business was going to be obeying God. We were in an auditorium of 250 capacity. Then we built an auditorium of 4,000 capacity. Don't you think that I need to be doing everything possible so that the place will be filled up? That's another calling. <laughs> that is a call. May you not be may you not be trapped in your own calling. May you not be trapped in your calling. May you not be bothered about your calling. So if you want to still remain relevant to me and to obey me, discontinue from claiming this place and let's meet on the field. Since that instruction came, it's um, about one year, eight months now, we've been hopping from place to place. When we, I checked how many boarding passes I had for last year, it was 54. 50, 54 boarding passes. The last time I checked, the number of weeks in a year are 52. I had 54 boarding passes for last year because the great one came to me and said meet me on the field your place is not here all right so we we continue meanwhile i didn't envisage i never envisage that after we got that place built by the hand of god then god will now be more interested in having me be outside of that place than in that place i'm saying that even in your own honest attempt to be relevant you might be doing something that is not an emphasis in God. Obeying the voice of the Lord is better than sacrifice and to hack it than the facts of wrong. So this is spiritual knowledge. He gives us another spiritual knowledge in verse 23. Please go to verse. For rebellion is as the sin of that means rebellion equals witchcraft. You see, to obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience is different from sacrifice are you there but rebellion is equal to witchcraft can you see the formula these these things he said came from spiritual knowledge so if you have a ministry that was pioneered under the auspices of rebellion there is nothing of god that can hang on it now what Mani taught us this he said all sins produce darkness but the sin of rebellion produced the highest measure of darkness. That's what money. I will never forget that. After I read that, I had to check my life to see if there was rebellion in any aspect of my dealings whatsoever. And to live free of rebellion so that my works can be rough in God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. Is there any record of rebellion that is tied to it? If there is a rebellion, then it will produce darkness. If there's rebellion, then it will produce death. You know, I told you that our probe has gone beyond whether it is good or evil. Where is it now? Whether it is life or death. 
the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, number what? Number six, using hype to replace the Holy Ghost. Hype, hype, hype. Yeah. Hype. H-Y-P-E. Hype. So somebody holds a microphone and then when you talk, then the person will hype it. Have you, have you seen that? Because things must be rolling. Things must be rolling. Things must be rolling. <laughs> uh, so when you say something, then the, the person will, you know, the person has a voice that can, you know, so he, he does that in the back. And that's preaching. If anybody goes high in the house of God, it should be under the influence of the Spirit of God. And meanwhile, we don't need a hype man behind the scene to make any difference. So when you begin to see all these things, you just see it is rooted in the flesh. That's it's showing you the source. Now, and, and we need to be this detailed so that you can understand what is the nature of this thing. The thing can be as big as a stadium. But if it is the flesh, it is the flesh. For the Bible says that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So when you see those hypes, I think you need to make your, up your mind at those points. Are you there? And then, finally, you see things like selling of prophecy. I was in a meeting when a minister was meet, ministering. He came to a lady and said, your name is Grace. She said, yes. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing there's one money. Okay, then he said, let's, let's negotiate. This money I'm seeing. How much will you give me? He said, okay, I'll give you 40%. He said, ah. but I'm the one that is seeing it. And he was negotiating, okay, 50 50, yes, okay, 50 50. Then he now continued and said, This amount you will receive an alert of. Then, meanwhile, the drummer was already. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> so, prophecy is for sale. Our spiritual sight, our spiritual capacities, once we begin to flow in it, then we monetize it. And everybody pays some amount and pays some amount, and everybody's happy. Now, you see. Uh, we are old school people and um, the Bible says freely have you received so freely give so if you are in the service of Jesus we will see it by your method by your strategy by your approach we will know what powers what you do whether it is flesh or spirit meanwhile this list I just read out to you is doing ministry powered by flesh there is another list here doing ministry powered by evil spirits there, it has its own symptom oh you are not with me uh, because you are you, you see, I say I've been doing research for three years. What I just read to you is are the symptoms you will find if it is done by flesh. I have a list, and that list is more exhaustive of the symptoms you will find if it's powered by a spirit. I mean a dark spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, you're not following. Since you're not following, I'm going to stop. First symptoms you will find if it's powered by a foul spirit is that there will be a chain of ladies that have been used as a sex as sex ob objects chain of ladies chain of ladies anyone that operates under the influence of a spirit of divination will have an insatiable appetite for sex in fact that is what is used to surface the power to renew the power so there are going to be chains of ladies chains of them many of them and for many among these chains of ladies that have been used in this regard these ladies are going to have issues with bleeding continuous bleeding just in case as a minister of the gospel someone comes with this symptom just ask the lady hey can you tell me the story behind this matter i can tell you like a mathematical formula that if there is an issue of persistent bleeding after that act then there is a very strong spiritual matter and you will need to have rank in the spirit to be able to help that lady. Are you there? Two, if a spirit is used, you are going to find these symptoms on almost all the members. Confusion, depression, and the spirit of accusation. Confusion, depression, and the spirit of what? Of accusation haunting the members that have been under this influence what number is that number three if a spirit is involved then we are going to have what is called demonic impartation demonic impartation 
demonic what? Impartation. Now, it's obvious you are not uh, very interested in this, my list. So, um, I have a shut down for now. Amen. Now, listen to me. I, uh, by the grace of God, I am a missionary and I preach from place to place, bearing the word of the kingdom and um, prophesying, preaching, and praying. And part of the trends I see on the field are people that have received demonic impartations. Where is Toby, my man? Now, uh, I will conduct a practical here now, and we'll find at least two individuals in this place that have received demonic impartation. Because I know you don't believe. So we will try to locate two individuals that are victims of demonic impartation. Demonic impartation is a terrible menace. A strange menace in the body of Christ. If you say you are a minister of the gospel and you don't have power to expel devils, you are not relevant in this time. There are many businesses that have opened up in, in, in the ICT realm. Go and learn one and you will make enough money. There are remote jobs now online. You can in, be cooked up to a job in Brussels while you are in Lagos and you are making a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds every month and you can you can do great things with two thousand pounds. Huh? Two thousand pounds is how much in Naira now? What, what? There are no. <laughs> Glory to God. 1.5 million. You say you don't know how to cast out devils? It's not part of your ministry? Then your ministry is elitist. It's not sent to this generation. Because I have statistics to show you that the level of demonic contamination right now has never been in history. Never been in history. Never been in the whole of history. People that unfortunate. I went to Enugu to preach and they brought a lady to me that was deaf. Barrister. Deaf lady. So I ministered to her. She began to hear. And the whole family was excited. Then I said, wait, 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 wait. How did she become deaf? She went for a crusade and the man of God laid hands on her and she became deaf. Yes! Uh, Philip, were you there? You see, you, there are a lot of, I had so many experiences because I've been on the field from the village till today. She became deaf because a man of God laid hands on her. Yes, in any way. In any way. Okay, that meeting, uh, this actress called Mama G, she was there. So when when I asked, uh, how did you become deaf? And they said it, Mama G shouted, Aah! That's how the person became deaf. Do you know how many people are contaminated? You sent your, your, your child to school and your child comes back and you know this is not your child. Contamination. He has gone somewhere for one night vigil. And the guy just renewed his powers and came to prophesy. Shall I prophesy? I bend my knees to pray in the night and the Holy Ghost will tell me, you cannot be weak now. There are so many people that have been polluted and they need to be cleaned up. That's what happens when there is no demarcation between the profane and the holy. Demonic impartation. This lady begins to do something like prophecy, do something like what I'm not, that she sees visions and all of that. And then people believe that it's prophetic. Meanwhile, it's one of the resources that was picked up from a strange place. If you allow that spirit there for too long, it will wipe out the, 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 the appetite, the desire for the person to go to school. No, I'm already a prophet. It will, it will blot out every desire for the person to be responsible, for the person to want to develop his or herself. And control by this spirit begins to seep in and to disarm every aspect of the person's life. And if we don't intervene quickly, you will find a situation that eventually the psychiatrist will call a mental health challenge and all it was was a demonic impartation I've walked into the psychiatric world before and the reason why I came was to discharge some people I didn't know it was wrong I said wait why are we doing deliverance in the corner and doing it on Sunday morning see the people so I went to the psychiatric world oh my god you don't know how much zeal I have zeal zeal 
I said, we are doing this thing by the corner. If it's true that we, are, we, we can do this in the name of the Lord, here they are. So I visited the psychiatric ward and looked for the most terrible case. And the boy's name was Sunday. You see, you, it was on Christmas Day. And I was on white suit. The first time I wore my wedding suit after my wedding, that was that day. Because my wedding suit was big on my wedding day. I had fasted. I was dry. I was inside like fish swimming. So after many years, I had to I put on weight. And then the suit now fitted me after like five years after my wedding. May the Lord give you understanding. So I just discovered that it's my size now. So in that joy, I, I, I arrayed myself. But it was in that same apparel that I was in the psychiatric. Do you know I saw people that were in that place that had no business being in that place because the reason why they are there was a demonic impartation. And I say this because I have a gift. A gift that enables me to know things like this. And you see, may God help you to know that I'm not saying it boastfully. I'm just crying. I'm crying. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. One member of our fellowship in Benue State, he said, oh, my daughter is wedding and you don't know her. You have not blessed her. Let me bring her. Brought daughter. I said, this one is dead now. Ah, he said, ah, you have to ah, Don't worry. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Stick. Take a seat. Then I went there and touched her. Touched her. Then she fell off. And then this black, I don't know what they call it, this black stuff, went up. It was wide for 30 minutes. I said, oh, come and see your daughter that wants a word. I said, she went somewhere and they deposited something. And whether she is aware of it or not, part of her blood is being drawn. And especially when you are burning low, there's no fire on your life. You are born again, but burning low. And it's nobody's fault. You chose to operate that way. Now you are a victim. You are not free. That's why we cook fire in our lives. So that if something kills us, it bounces. It bounces back. So I cast the spirit of death from her. Then the mother now said, what if she didn't bring her daughter? Whether that's your fault, whether you bring her or not is your fault. But I've seen so many contaminated people that went and picked things up. When you, when you interview them behind the scene, you now discover they did nothing wrong other than going to a place where they received a demonic impartation. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.